This video is about money market accounts. I know, super boring, super not exciting. It's not swing trading. It's not shorting stocks. It's money market accounts. But if you're retired or if you have a chunk of cash and need liquidity and you're looking to get some zero volatility and good yields, watch the rest of this video. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Money market accounts are boring. They, well, in the past, they actually didn't yield you anything. I remember as a financial advisor, at the end of my career, you were getting like a quarter to half of a percent on your money market account. You didn't make any money, yet you didn't really ever lose any money. Well, that's all really changed here recently with the Fed funds rate moving higher and continuing to move higher. See, the Fed funds rate moves up the cost of money and it's also driving, in a way, the treasury market. And with treasuries now, 10-year, right around 4% now, a lot of people are going, wow, this is awesome. I can get a 10-year treasury uh, tax-exempt uh, interest on that. That's fantastic. But the problem with treasuries is, or any other bond is, is there's volatility involved. You can lose money in bonds. I mean, yeah, if you bought them below par, uh, which is the value they're issued at, and when they mature, you get that $1,000 par value. Yeah, you get that back. But a lot of people don't invest that way. They buy mutual funds that are bond related. And those bond mutual funds can go up and down based on the movement of the underlying bonds. Now bonds are like teeter totters. Let's just imagine you and a friend go to the park and you get on the left side of the teeter totter and you represent yields. And your buddy goes on the right side of the teeter totter and he represents the value of the bond, the, you know, the, what it's worth. And so when he goes up, your yield goes down, which means his the value of the bond goes up. But when you go up, representing the yield, the value of the bond goes down. Well, if you've been paying any attention to the bond market here in the last, say, couple years, you have watched yields bounce around a lot. And in particular, the treasury market yields. Well, recently, the 10-year treasury, the two-year treasury, have all been starting to move higher. Well, if yields go up in a bond, you're losing value. And then, so if you buy a bond mutual fund and they're swapping out bonds, buying and selling bonds, and you get an average of whatever the yield is on the, on the, from the underlying uh, bonds that are in the mutual fund, you know, that, that can adjust for you, that can move around, but it also can go down and when bonds sell off, bond mutual funds go down. So I bring all this up because I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. They just sold a house. They're rolling that money into a possible another property, which they're gonna do a 1031 exchange. They went to their financial advisor and they said, hey, we have roughly you know mid six figure amount of money. We need liquid and have the ability to get to, and we can't risk anything. We can't risk uh, the value of this money going down. Well, he came to them and said, well, here, you should buy treasuries. And this is back when 10-year treasury was about 3.8 or so percent, which is a great yield. No, don't get me wrong. That's a great yield. But the problem was their key question or key request was they want no volatility. They don't want to see this uh, value move up and down especially when they're going to need it. So if it isn't the price, you know, the value that they put it in at uh, and it was lower, they'd be, they would be in a pickle. They would have to come up for, with the difference. So I got to talking to them. They were asking me questions about it. I said, well, the reason they want to put you in to a uh, mutual fund of bonds or a treasury bonds is number one reason, they get paid on that. Your overall, in their case, our overall wrap fee uh, 
pays them if the money is invested in bonds or equities or alternatives or something like that. But you don't, my financial advisors don't get paid if you put it in a money market account. So in a way, the advisor was, well, putting their interest, you know, their interest second to his. And that's where I think you have to take a look at your asset allocation. Right now, the bond market is moving around. If you can stomach the moving around, you can get some great yields. But if you want a zero volatile volatility situation, you want to zero out volatility on, say, 40% of your portfolio, well, one way to do it is to go shop money market accounts. So today I went and I got to thinking about this. And I got to thinking about what's coming in the near future when it comes to volatility in the markets, volatility in the bond markets, the risk of the bond markets right now. And my conclusion was, what is an alternative to putting my money, my risk, my risk off assets from a, say, uh, bond fund, mutual fund or a uh, individual bonds, uh, corporate or treasuries or municipals? What is my alternative right now? what I found was money market accounts, they're paying well. This hasn't happened in like years, 20 some years. If I remember back that far, 20 some odd years, have we not, we have not seen the yields that are coming out of money market accounts. So one of the companies I went to was Fidelity, one of the largest asset managed firms in the world. They just collect assets and they have all different types of investments from mutual funds to ETFs to money market accounts. And what did I find in the money market accounts? Mind blowing yields in a asset that doesn't bounce around. Let me repeat that. Mind blowing yields in an asset that doesn't move, doesn't go up or down based on an underlying market. No, it just collects and produces a yield. So some of the ones I looked at, and I'm just gonna rattle them off, and please, before I rattle all these uh, tickers off, take into account, this is not advice. This is not a recommendation, but this is an idea that you have to make a decision on if you care to make a move in your portfolio. This is not my responsibility. This is yours. I'm just sharing information. There, there's the disclosure. So I went to Fidelity and I came across one of the first, uh, they have a lot of different mutual uh, money market accounts, all based on different risk levels within a uh, money market account. And maybe I should back up for a second and explain a money market account. How do they get the yield? Well, they get the yield by buying short-term debt. So for instance, the US Treasury issues coupons, and it may be a coupon that pays, uh, say, for 30 days. It's good for 30 days, so they'll buy a handful of that. Maybe they buy some less than two-year treasuries, and, uh, and so they get the yield from that. But they're constantly flipping buying and flipping these underlying assets, locking and keeping it stable at $1 for $1, one-to-one -one ratio, so you're not getting volatility, but they're constantly moving up the yield curve in a sense, meaning two years ago or a, a year ago, if you owned a two-year treasury, you're probably in the, you know, right around 2%. Well, today, you're in the mid 4%. So what a money market uh, manager does is he seeks out these movements in the yield. And he basically buys and sells, buys and sells, buys and sells. So he, sustaining that seven day yield average. So I'm looking at the Fidelity uh, SPAXX. Sorry, I'm looking over at my notebook. SPAXX. The seven day average yield on this is 4.22%. 4.22%. You put your money in, you put, say, $100,000 into something like this. You're making 4.22%. There's no volatility. There's no up and down. There's no, you know, NVIDIA did great and the stock went through the roof in one day event. No. But it also doesn't go down when Tesla blows their 
you know, their investor day and uh, Tesla drops 6% a day. You don't experience that. And when you're asset allocating, what you're trying to do is you're trying to put uncorrelated assets that basically prevent you from losing your shirt. Well, the bond market has become volatile again. It's moving up and down. And a lot of this is happening because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, the Fed funds rates. Well, what this is causing is money market accounts are becoming attractive. So the Fidelity SPAXX is paying 4.22%. They have one that is the FMPXX, and it's paying 4.59%. 4.59%. The thing about this is some of these require a minimum amount of money and these share classes, I believe, are institutional level. So they may have a requirement of, say, a million dollars requirements, but there are mutual funds like at Goldman Sachs or just a flat out money market account. In this case, their market account, you can get 3.75%. There's no volatility. There's no movement in the underlying. So if I'm retired, hypothetically, I'm retired and I've got my whole lifetime nest egg and my risk level is conservative. So let's say I'm 80%, you know, fixed income, uh, low risk assets and 20% equities. One option would be to maybe allocate that 80 portion of that 80% to a money market account paying anywhere between at Goldman Sachs, a 3.75% a yield, or go to Fidelity, and if I have the minimum requirement for their money market account, get as high as 4.59% of that overall 80% allocation. Now, I've heard some active money managers that I follow who basically they're running their own book of business, so they're a proprietary uh, investor, trader, or they're a, um, they're a family office that manages big money they're allocating upwards of 75% of their overall risk off assets into money market accounts. See, remember, this hasn't happened in a long, long time where you could get these insane levels in money market accounts. So what I would encourage you to do is if you're closing in on retirement, if you're in retirement and you're seeing your fixed income portion or your a uh, low risk asset class bouncing around each quarter, I would go maybe talk to my financial advisor and say, hey, I'm looking at money market accounts and they're paying this. And they'll say, likely, yeah, but you can buy a treasury bond uh, portfolio and it's report doing this and it's tax exempt. And you go, right, but you minus your fee, most likely it's 1% of assets under management off the top of that. And uh, you now you're down, you know, like say at three percent. Okay, all right. Well, then there's volatility in the market, bond market. Well, then what's the value of my fixed income portion? Uh, I know. Have an honest to god conversation with them because mo majority of financial advisors are good people. They mean well. But as my father once said to me, you understand how a man gets paid, and you'll understand his motives. So work out a deal. Work out a deal with the guy, you know, I don't know, to say, listen, I don't want to risk my 80% of my portfolio in the bond market because it's going up and down, up and down, and because the economy is slowing. I don't want to risk that. I want to put a good amount away in a money market account paying well over, you know, over like Goldman Sachs's 3.75% uh, uh, for their savings account and, and better at Fidelity. I want to do that but I know you need to make a living. If you have that honest to God conversation with them, chances are they'll go, well, yeah, you're right. I don't get paid on money market accounts. So what can we do? How can we work this out? Is there something we can make happen where, you know, at the end of the day, he still gets to turn on the lights. Now, some of you will be pissed off and you'll move all your money from your financial advisor and it may be well justified, but understand how a man gets paid. Like for me, how do I get paid? I get paid by you clicking the like button and subscribing to the Best of U.S. Investors channel or signing up for my newsletter at qqqtrades, T-R-A-D-E-S, dot club. 
That's how I get paid. I'm transparent, shouldn't everybody else? And shouldn't you be managing your overall risk by looking at alternatives that haven't been presented opportunities like we're seeing in money market accounts today in like 20 some odd years? You should be active and doing your due diligence and asking questions. I hope this has been helpful. Go check out Fidelity. Go check out uh, Goldman Sachs's Marcus account division. Go check out your local bank and ask them, what do your money market accounts pay? Not the CDs where you lock the money up forever, but money market accounts where they're liquid, where you can get the money and quickly reallocate that when the economy bottoms out and the markets bottom out. That's what you want is liquidity. It's a suggestion. It's not advice or a recommendation. But this to me is one of the best low risk, low volatility asset por asset allocation portions of your portfolio. And today it's money market accounts. Not exciting, not sexy, not something you talk about around the water cooler at work, but still four and a quarter on your money. And in this environment, it ain't all that bad folks. Now is it? Thank you.